All right. Okay. Hey, welcome to the podcast today. And guess what? We're together. Tom, Gavin, the simple guys. We're together in the studio recording live. So, how, how did we get that name? Actually, I was going to ask you that off camera. The simple guys. The I, simple guys I, is the, is the like login it. for the WordPress that we <laughs> use for the. <laughs> I want to change that. Why? I, don't know. I like it. I, I'm very com- I'm a very, I'm simple church, but I'm a I'm a complicated individual. Yeah. <laughs> keep, keep it simple. Oh man! Well, welcome back, and it is good to be together again with Tom and continue this podcast that we've just been doing for forever now. But it's been really good, and um, really encouraged too uh, by all you folks that have encouraged us by sending us notes and things of that nature. So thank you, and that we always that means a lot. We're really kind of doing it for Tom and I's purposes, and hopefully it's blessing others as well. And it's always nice to know that it is. So thank and you. And we're making tons of money, right? And we're Gavin? making tons of money. Uh, you'll <laughs> notice all the ad reads we'll do during the course of this show, and that'll let you know just how lucrative this business is. But uh, today, uh, I thought we would talk a little bit, Tom, since it has been a while you and I have been together. Uh, we want to talk about hospitality today. That's where we're going. But before we get into that, I want to I want to just catch up and. Just give a little bit of life updates. Tell me about what you've been up to the last, I don't know, month or so. Well, it's been a lot longer than that since we were together. Um, um, I can just say, Gavin, you are incredibly busy, and so am I. Um, too busy to get together to, to record sometimes. It's been maybe two months. Maybe. Yeah, two months. And um, we've just been incredibly busy. I've been busy at work and with, uh, you know, life events and um, ministry. Now is the time for Bonnie and I to welcome new students to campus at U- University of Louisville. So there are new international students coming in and uh, we're trying to meet their needs and pick them up at the airport, um, find them a place to live, take them shopping, things like that. So um, that's where we're at. Yeah. And uh, it's just incredibly busy. Yeah. Yeah, same on our end. We, uh, man, it seems like the last couple of weeks especially, but we've, um, I've been finding myself more involved with Skate Church. That's a simple church community that's kind of happened over time throughout the area here. And I've been doing that a little more. And then uh, I lost a grandmother a couple of weeks ago. I uh, had the opportunity to do that funeral for her. The next very next day, I had the opportunity to baptize two of my children. And then a couple of days after that, I sent my oldest son, uh, one of the first ones in our family, to, to leave the house. He, he went on to college. So, uh, yeah. And then been uh, working on the retreat, which um, probably the time folks hear this, that, that would have happened. But really excited for that. And, uh, yeah, it's been full. Life, life has been full. And uh, I really have been encouraged. I, I, the, the last podcast I did with uh, Bart, which you weren't a part of, but I'm assuming you listen. You know, those things. You know, that that's really been the theme and something that's been. I've had a lot of conversations with people about, and the Lord's really been encouraging me through just a continual conversation around some of those ideas that we talked about in that that podcast, that interview I did with him. So that that was really good and. That was a good interview. I yeah, that. yeah, just been encouraged. Uh, by Go back and, and check that out if you. If you yeah, a couple of episodes back, uh, one thirty. I don't remember the numbers. Yeah, but uh, it's. <laughs> it's but, not yeah. far. Yeah, so it's good. I, I've just I've definitely been encouraged, and our, our our house church, simple church community has been interesting. With this summer, we've had a lot of new folks come and be a part of it, and I suppose at some point, if everybody comes at the same time, it's going to be a little too big. And, uh, but I, I've sort of made a decision not to stress about all that and just let the Lord work it out, and um, we'll see what happens. But I assume that maybe there'll be some conversation in the coming weeks about maybe a new group coming forming somewhere in there in our in our house church. Not exactly how I would have planned it, but it seems good, and God's just doing some really good things. So maybe that'll happen. Maybe that won't. I, I don't know. But we've been really we've been really encouraged lately. I think uh, amidst some just challenging things, but some really good stuff happening. So, cool. yeah, cool. a bit of a life update. I wish we could uh, be there at the conference. Um, it's always <laughs> on a weekend where I'm working, so I'm sorry about that. 
Well, it's all it, no no sweat. You know, that's a thing where I think we've talked about. You know, for me, it's tough. I find it attention sometimes because I have realized over the years, like like sometimes even something as simple as like inviting someone to a conference can be put on people as like almost like. I mean, there's good intention there. You're like, man, we really want you to come. Like, you don't miss out. But it's sort of like you can say those things in encouragement, and sometimes it comes from a good place, but it actually inadvertently you end up kind of putting things on people, maybe that the Lord hasn't put on them, you know. And I, I want, I would want people to feel the freedom to come or not to come, and uh, if, you know, it may not be for everybody. It may just be for a handful of people or whatever the Lord has, you know. So I know, I know you would like to be there. But don't hope, hope you or anyone else would never feel like maybe next year. like they've let me down or something if they can't come. I mean, I I have to say no to a million and one things that I really would like to do all the time. So that's just life. Well, yeah, times yeah. we've been there in the past. It's been yeah uh, an uplifting and enjoyable experience. Yeah. So next yeah. year, let's all go. Yeah, and and along those lines, you know what I really I, there was a, a well Dave Toth who's been part of this. They have a house church up in Ohio. They, he wasn't going to be able to come uh, to the retreat. So he had asked if I could come up there and spend an afternoon. And that was really wonderful. And that's actually something that honestly fits more even in with some of maybe the ideas of Simple Church. But I would obviously, and I know you would too, we, we, we would work it out if we could. But I certainly speak for myself. Like I would make that a high priority. If any house church or community out there anywhere was interested in having a retreat maybe just even with their folks that are a part of their community or friends that are maybe interested in simple church ideas and would like to get away for an overnight and maybe just have help, help someone to facilitate a conversation about what is simple church and how does it happen for folks? Man, I would love to do that. You know, I think that's kind of what the retreat is in a lot of ways, but we can bring that to anyone, anywhere and, I come free of charge if I can get there. If you can get, help me get there. <laughs> if, I, if I have to fly across the country, I might uh, might do some help on that. But maybe not even that. So I don't know. But we'd love to do that, you know. And uh, I think it's just all. It's always really good to stop and take a break from the hustle and bustle and just sort of think about, you know, what are we doing? Why are we doing it? Especially if you're married. I mean, I know how it is. You know how I mean. You can get so busy just to kind of say, what is what kind of take a little inventory and just pause and take a deep breath and think about well, Lord, what are we, what are we doing? What is this church family thing? What, what are you saying to us? And, and that's so important, you know, probably need to do that every a lot, lot more frequently than a year, every year, but certainly every year is good. But uh, yeah, so that's that. So yeah, I want to get into our topic today. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's start talk out? about uh, let's talk about hospitality. What is hospitality? Why is it important? Why is it important to the Christian life? Why is it important to house church or any church or any uh, any any expression of the Christian life? Um, so, uh, hospitality is just providing the, for the needs of of people uh, in your home or or in your orbit in your sphere. I mean, I could look up the the real definition, but that's kind of a uh, paraphrase. Providing hospitality is just be you know, it's it's like love your neighbor in a small way, a small tangible way. Uh, usually it involves providing for their needs, whether it's a, a meal or a place to sleep for the night or, you know, just a cup of coffee. It's, um, it's a way to develop a relationship. It's a way to to uh, get to know somebody, just talk yeah. to them, you know, because when you're, when you're doing hospitality, you're, you're showing empathy, you're showing sympathy, you're showing, uh, you're just trying to get into their, their life, into their space, and yeah. allowing them to get into yours. Yeah, when I think of it, and you know, we can even look, there's, you know, scriptures we were talking about earlier that even command us, you know, get, you know, it seems to be a new, it's a New Testament idea of that we're to show hospitality and we're asked you know, to do that. But, you know, I, I think one of the things just to, to step, take a step back, you know, I was sharing with you, I, you know, we did the back to basics thing a while back. We looked at the video that I had put together and kind of spent a couple episodes talking about that. And I think the thing that I've been thinking a lot about since we did those podcasts is the very end part of that video 
um, and, and sort of this idea that simple church really is a way of life. Most of the conversations that I have day to day with folks, it, it centers around the meeting and, and that's fine because that's where people enter into the conversation. But really, I think at the heart of what, you know, God as God sort of laser focus and giving me more of a laser focus of what it is I'm doing and what I'm about and what I want to be about, what he's about, you know, this idea that really we're about a way of life. It's about a way of life. And, and under that banner of simple church as a way of life, um, hospitality is like so high, I think, on that list. In fact, I would even, you know, as I was thinking about it, this topic today, so, you know, I, I, I have the conversation with folks a lot of times, and I think it just sort of, it doesn't speak to a lack of willingness to be hospitable so much as it does, I think, ideas of leadership and ideas of church that are ingrained in people's hearts and minds that they bring to this conversation. But when, when I, I, I talk to people a lot and the question will be, well, um, you know, how do I start a, a simple church or how can I be a part of a simple church? And I'll inevitably throw out the idea, well, you know, you're welcome to come to mine, my, my home. Uh, but what I would really like for, to, to, to do is to help you to consider starting a simple church yourself and maybe me coming to you and helping you and your friends begin thinking about community and church in a new way and kind of embracing this kind of way of life. Well, and, and I never get the question, well, I don't think, you know, we could lead a, a house church or we're not ready to do that. Or we, you know, I don't know that our home would be a good place for that or whatever. And so I think that a lot of times that response comes because people have, a certain idea about leading a house church that's maybe more in line with leading in a maybe traditional way because to me simply leading uh, being willing to lead a house church is very very akin to being willing to be hospit hospitable and show hospitality and and I, I don't I mean I, I there might be a few little things that we might say that there would be different but um, certainly the people that met in the churches in the New Testament and people's homes, like we, we, we know that, man, there was people opening their homes for the church to have fellowship. They were showing hospitality. And so I think, I think it's so important. Bart and I, in the podcast we were referring, he alluded to Rosaria Butterfield and uh, the book she wrote. I think the title was that the gospel comes with the house key and her story mm -hmm. we talked about and I think the videos linked on Simple Church website, uh, simplechurchlines.com about her story and about how she came to Christ through some Christians just inviting her over for dinner and, and it's an amazing story. But really that's the kind of way of life, Tom, that I think is so important for all Christians and certainly uh, in house church or simple church, the idea that you could be a part of God's family or that you could be a part of the kingdom and not be willing to be, grow in, in your in your ability to be hospitable to others. I think that's like a that wouldn't be something that would make a lot of sense. I don't think no. it, you know. So hospitality is so important. You mentioned it. Uh, it is a high priority, and scripture has a lot to say about it. We're going to get into some of those those um, scriptures in just a minute. But the, the reason that I think it has such a high priority is because it is so effective. It, it is like a laser beam focused on the person across from you um, and, and how God can use that, that relationship, that situation, that, that uh, event to, to really speak to a person. Because you know, let's face it, this, this, uh, this world that we're living in, uh, this generation, this society, we don't do hospitality very well. So when someone sees it done properly, sees it done well, that they feel like, hey, they're cared about. You care about me. You, uh, you're you not just doing this to get something from me. You really care about me. Um, you're sharing your resources with me. You're sharing yeah. a meal with me. You're sharing your, your house, uh, your couch, whatever. Um, that makes me feel... Um, valuable. It yeah. makes me feel valuable. It makes me. I, I use this uh, example a lot. And my wife and I are doing ministry with international students 
And man, that is the trump card, hospitality. You invite them over to your house, man, that is, that's huge because it's huge in their culture. If we, if we visited their culture, man, we'd be in their house, they cook for us, they'd knock themselves up, they would empty their pantry to, to feed us. We experienced this in Kenya when we lived there. But um, other cultures do hospitality so much better than we do. It's, it's a dying art uh, for us. Um, I think it, it's, it's dying because of atrophy. We're, we're not doing it the way we used to. I remember when growing up as a kid in the 60s and 70s, my mom and dad did it very well. Um, not always, but they, they did it pretty well. Anyone could come to our house. They could knock on the door, and mom and dad would invite them in. And, you know, they'd be at the, the table drinking coffee and discussing for hours and hours. And it was it was nothing to, to have that happen. Mm -hmm. They entertained a lot. We, we had people over for dinner almost, you know, twice, three times a week. And it was nothing. Yeah. And um, it was great. Um, we learned a lot from that. I'm not so good at it, uh, but... Uh, you know, there's one scripture that says, you know, practice hospitality without grumbling and complaining. I mean, it's, yeah. it is a lot of work, um, and, and don't let that, you know, stop you from doing it. But uh, it, it's a lot of work. You, you grumble, you complain, you know, people show up, they don't eat what you make. <laughs> they make a mess in your house. And, uh, but it's, let me tell you something, it is, it is entirely worth it. It's yeah. entirely worth it. Well, I think that... Again, like it's, I, I and I, I think that we're we we live in a culture that's one, you know, and I think there's a we've you know we've talked about this. There's a lot of really really good things about kind of thinking about things individualistically. You know, like we live in a very individualistic society, and so much of our home has been seen as a place of refuge from the world. Like, man, I go I don't go home to. I go home to get away from people. I put my fence up so that I don't have to be bothered by anybody. I, you know, that's why I got this house out on land so that I don't have anybody, you know, looking to breathing down my neck. You know, these things like, and, and there's some good things about that. There's some healthy things about that, but it can't be at the expense of hospitality because, I mean, another thing that this is very much akin to is just loving your neighbor. It's lo it's just loving people, and and in that video where we talked about, again, the umbrella under, it's a way of life. You know, a big part of Simple Church is this idea that we are helping uh, to give birth to spiritual families. And, and, and we want them to be healthy spiritual families. And unfortunately, you know, we, we, you know, a lot of us probably don't come from super healthy families and earthly families. So we, we pick up these bad habits and sometimes we can bring them into the church and that those bad habits are more of like, you know, we, we kind of stick to ourselves. We, you know, we, we, we're not just open and free with our possessions and with, with our, our time and our belongings and our home. Um, and so I think that's just, it, I think it's so important and it's a real challenge. And I think that would be something really good for us to talk about, like in your own life and in my life, why is it hot? Why, why do we ha find it difficult to show hospitality? Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes, again, maybe, you know, we immediately think hospitality, we, we may think, oh, like letting someone live in our house or come sleep on our couch or whatever. But it can be a lot more of, a, of things. So maybe we could talk about that, but also just some of the barriers that stand in folks' way or on our way to showing hospitality. Yeah, yeah. So... I'm thinking of the story of um, when Jesus was at Lazarus' house and they were having a meal, and the two sisters, Mary and Martha, uh, were involved in putting that on. And you have Mary sitting at the feet of Jesus, just listening to every word he said, and just enthralled by his teaching and his presence, and and just absorbed in what he was saying. And then you have Martha in the kitchen just scrambling to put on some food and make, you know, make this meal and make sure everybody got what they, they, they could. She, she got so frustrated and she comes in the living room and says, Jesus, make her help me. I'm, I'm swamped here. And, uh, you know, what does Jesus say? You know, she, there are a lot of things going on here. She, Mary has chosen the important one. So, uh, as, as important as hospitality is, it is a vehicle to get us into the presence of Jesus 
and and get him get to where we are able to listen to him. So you know, that's a very real story. You know, Martha. We've all been Martha, and we've all been Mary, <coughs> and we've all been frustrated because you know we're trying so hard to make this event go off very smoothly, and then you know. We've looked over and we've seen him just, or her, just kind of yeah. sitting on the couch talking and like, come on, can't you see all these dishes? You know? Well, I think what you're talking about kind of makes me think of that. You know, I can think of situations where, you know, I've been over to people's homes or I've visited with people or shared like a space with people, but not felt welcome or not felt like there, there's been a lack of hospitality. It's not just a matter of opening your door and saying, come on in, you know, and then it's like the whole time that you're in this person's space that you are frustrated or like, you know, that there's, there, there's like a coldness or there's not a warmth. There's not a, you know, it, it, I think about um, one thing that we, we talked with our kids about, and this came up a while back and I, I, it came up again more recently, but we were talking about, I don't even remember where it came up or who brought it up, but it's sort of this idea of like, are you the kind of person that seeks to be interesting or are you the kind of person that takes interest in others? Do you, do you seem to, are you, do you try to be interesting to other people or do you take interest in other people? Mm -hmm. And it's sort of an interesting thing I think to think about because we were talking about that with our kids. Like when you're around other people, you know, do you take interest or are you kind of thinking about like yourself or, talking about yourself or yeah. Yeah. trying to come off as someone who has is an interesting person. And I think that can be uh, a real challenge, you know, to, to, to really stop and say, I, you know, this person may be inconveniencing me. They may be, I had other things going on, but now this person showed up. How can I just deny myself and take interest in this person's life? You know, that comes off. I think there, that's linked to hospitality mm -hmm. whenever, you know, you're in someone's space, but they're taking interest in you and they're listening to you and they're asking you questions and seeing how you're doing. And yeah. it's not about you, you know. Well, that, that reminds me of Ephesians 5 where it says, submit yourselves one to another. When you're, when you're dying to tell this interesting story, but you're suppressing that in order to hear their story, you know, you're submitting yourself to them yeah. and making them feel more important than you. Yeah, um, that's yeah, it's a, it's a Christian concept. I think I think a, I think a big barrier to hospitality is I think of my own life and experiences and just in talking with others. You know, I think there are some like real tangible things. Like there is a, and again, I, I don't want to say that all of this is bad because I think we do need our space. We need to be able to have places where we can get away and kind of kind of have our own place you know uh, but I think sometimes we hold on to things too much I know I do like I you know I don't want people to come over because we just cleaned or I don't want people to come over because like I know that you know we spent all day organizing this and then those kids are just gonna take all that stuff out you know or whatever <laughs> there's these things and it's like well maybe we shouldn't even like we're prioritizing things and and, and possessions over people, yeah. you know, or and, peace, or yeah, or peace, and yeah. um, peace and, and quiet, and and I know that man, it's tough. I mean, I'm even thinking of some situations now that I'm even convicted about where it's challenging. It's just pe people can be challenging, and, and there is something about you know, if you just you, again, we all need our time. We need time with our family. We need you know, we all need that time, but we don't need to hoard it you know we can open up and for some it's baby steps maybe more than you know it's like how can we make it such that if a stranger comes here and knocks on our door that they will feel welcome to come in and, and they won't be feeling like man we just interrupted them and we've really put them out you know maybe there's a certain room in your house where you have it prepared for that and you can say oh well, let's go in here and have a seat and talk and you know and then and you're, you, you've got that mentally set aside. This is a room that we can have immediately available for someone to show up and sleep on the couch, or it's, it's set up such that they can't mess anything up. It's not going to affect our lives, um, you know. And maybe, maybe you don't have a room like that. Maybe that's a luxury. But maybe there's just other ways that you can prepare in advance beforehand to help be hospitable. I think is something that you know we've thought about. Yeah. 
it's kind of a posture you have and don't think that your house ha always has to be perfectly clean or you, you always have to serve these fantastic meals it could be something a lot simpler than that but just I think I think part of hospitality is having the posture towards others and away from yourself you know towards somebody or, or just being very sensitive to what the spirits telling you like hey this guy has something he wants to talk about why don't you take him out to uh, to get some coffee or um, you know, whatever but um, yeah it, it, it it's a it's it's a lot of work um, I think barriers um, some of the barriers is some people just aren't cut out for it <laughs> that's not an excuse not to, to practice it but some people you're just not going to do it as well as others and uh, I don't think you need to just give up and say well I'm not good at it so I don't do it at all I think I think we all need to try but some people some people that they need to work on it. They they really need to work on those skills, just very simple skills like how do you how do you uh, greet someone? How do you how do you uh, invite them over? How do you what how do you treat them once they're in your house? Do you make them feel comfortable? Uh, give them a drink right away. Give them something to eat right away or hors d'oeuvres, or, or do you just um, ignore them? Say you know what are you doing here? <laughs> Yeah. I remember there was a guy who's a mentor of mine and it makes me think of this conversation. And I think this guy, I, I really remember his name is Roy Mays and a lot of people around here know him. Uh, but I got to know him a little bit before he passed away. And I can remember going over to his house and immediately feeling welcome. I can remember every time I was with him feeling like, man, he really wanted to be with me and spend time with me and he cared about me. Um, and I remember, uh, at his funeral, they talked about uh, something that, that when they said it, I was like, that is so true, and, and this man, Roy, lived this out so well, and it really encouraged me to want to be like him, and because I think he was like Jesus. But the, the statement was made that, you know, with Roy, the, that the task was the relationship. And so many times, like, we get task-oriented. You know, we got to do this, do that, do this, do this. And for him, he knew that the, the only task that there really that really mattered was the relationship, you know, with people that that that, that you couldn't interrupt him or disrupt something more important he had going on because the most important thing that he could be involved in was was developing a relationship with someone and building that relationship. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's really, you know. I think we see that in Jesus, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that when we talk about simple church as a way of life, when we talk about simple church as being more about relationship than about, um, you know, programs, when we talk about leadership as being, you know, being a, a, a skill or something that's very entwined with simple church leadership as being hospitable, you know, that's what we're talking about, you know, and, and so I think, I think, man, that's, that's a really good thing for me I, I'll always try to remember mm -hmm. um, so yep I had a thought and I lost it <laughs> well it won't be the first time uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I, I, I would I would love to hear you know from you all like do you all have any stories that shoot them our way that you have stories of how you've seen others show hospitality to you or that your simple church has been able to demonstrate hospitality to others and it's God's used just this, just something simple, maybe, to really make a huge impact in others' lives. I, man, those are the stories we love to hear, and uh, feel free to share those with us. And, and if we can share them with others as well, whether it be on a website or in this podcast, man, that would be awesome. Because we do want to become, we want to grow in this. This is not something necessarily easy. It comes more natural to others. But, it, but I find, too, is the older I get, you know, it's like, the more my time and my place and, you know, that becomes more important, it seems. Um, but I think it can become unhealthy too, you know, to become more and more isolated. Like I just want to go in here and not be bothered, you know, right, by right. the world or by the problems out there. This is my, my house is a getaway rather than a ministry center, rather than a place for Jesus to love to just be like shared and poured out amongst any and all who come and, right. 
you know, um, I, I'll tell you one thing that my wife and I started doing, and sometimes we regret it, but we, <laughs> but jokingly regret it. It's been really good is that, especially since our daughter's been born, is we just tell everybody, say, listen, like, we would love to schedule time to get together with you all and catch up, but to be honest, like, day to day, we, we don't, we don't really know that, that that may never happen. So if you're driving around, please stop by. We we want people to just drop in on us. And that's that people have taken us up on it. And it's been great because we've been able to you know see people and visit, you know, for a few minutes with people that um that we wouldn't have if we were like, let's try to get our calendars out and find a time. You know, people have been gracious to take us up on that invitation. But it does sort of mean having some things ready, like, okay, somebody comes in, the kids know, I'll go get some tea, I'll mm -hmm. see if they would like something to drink. You know, there's some talk, thought process of how that works when we have people show up. And, yeah. and so just talking through those things can be really good. And going back to what you said before, if you feel like all you can do is hunker down and shut the door, lock the door, um, maybe you need to look at things in your life that you need to cut out of your life or slow down. And certainly, do not neglect quiet time with your, you know, with yourself, with your family, family time. Do not neglect that for hospitality. We're not, that's not what we're saying. But what we're saying is everything in balance. You know, have your have your family time, have your your free time, but also leave some room for other people. Leave some room to offer your time and energy to to invest in them. Uh, like you said, your friend of yours that. Um, you know, when I'm, I'm getting the feeling that whenever he was with someone else, that that other person was the most important person in the room, mm -hmm. and that that makes you feel valuable. That makes you feel worthy. It makes you feel like a child of God. Yeah, and I think for anyone out there who's maybe checking in this podcast because they're interested in house church or simple church, and maybe you you can't really imagine hosting. Uh, or being a leader in a simple church, maybe a baby step would be just to say, "Hey, let's let's take this night of the week and keep it open and available to host people, to invite folks over to our home for a cup of coffee. Maybe it's not a whole dinner. Maybe you're not a person that makes dinner. Maybe you can get you know McDonald's cheeseburgers and Domino's pizza, Domino's maybe. pizza. But just make that time, set aside some intentional time." And, and just pray and say, Lord, like I'm, I'll leave this time available to any whom you bring my way. And, and just be watchful and see who the Lord uh, brings across your paths. And I bet as you do that, you'll start to realize, oh, like I know I'm available Thursday night from 6 to 8. Like I should invite these person to see if they would like to come over, you know, or, you know, and just see what the Lord does. I, I think you'd be surprised and I think it would be encouraging that, that that really is a lot of how simple church families are born as people just begin being hospitable, opening the door of their home and opening their lives up to uh, other people and making space for that. So good. that sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let us know what you think. And uh, we appreciate you all chiming in and uh, send us ratings and comments. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to hopefully connecting up with you all uh, in the future. If you're not subscribed at simplechurchalliance.com, you can do that and posts get updated there, including podcast episodes that we publish as well as the Keep It Simple podcast.com. That's the official website, I guess, hosted by the Simple Guys, which we're going to get that name changed. No. But uh, thanks oh, for joining us, and we'll see you next time. We'll see you. Bye-bye.